Shut up and sit down. Hello. Hello. Welcome to episode 15 of the Voice It Show. I am Kanak. That's Funky and back up with you Hello. once again this week. Hi, hi. How are you guys? Hey, look, everybody's there. In the con. Oh. Federal Roxy is kind of Roxy style. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Maybe for some of you. Hello. Greetings. Once again, welcome, welcome, and welcome. It's so great to see you guys. Just to say, subscribe to The Voice It Show if you haven't already. And uh, that's how we go. <laughs> so today is a very special day. And today is a very special guest. Today's exactly. special guest is very special, just as Funky <laughs> always says. Yes. <laughs> and we are very, very excited, just as you are, to meet our guest because Many of us know him, but yet we don't know him. We have talked to him, yet we haven't talked to him. So there are many things, but there aren't many things. Yeah, and like he that. has been, he has been, uh, you know, behind the scenes a lot. But today it's a special day for us to bring forth an eminent personality who is, to speak of his excellence is, is, is something, you know, beyond, 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 a, beyond a niche because <laughs> we are still students and we are still learning, but back end, funkier. So, <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, today we have with us Professor Rick Chalfant and Professor Bikas. He is Program Director for Graphic Design at Northwest Arkansas Community College. He has done his Master's in Fine Arts from University of Arkansas. He has a bachelor's of science degree in graphic design. And he has been garnered with various awards, including the prestigious Arkansas Governor's Fellowship. And his photographic art is also in the permanent collection of the Arkansas Arts Council. And this is something that we rarely know but all of us know him as a dear Vic from In the Trenches, from Sunday Livestream Sunday, and all of the other Roxy shows. So without any further ado, let's welcome Professor Vic. Hey, good morning. Hello. I guess Yay. good evening to you. <laughs> good hey. morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you all? Fantastic. Okay, really good. Welcome to the Voice It Show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And you're just off just off a of class. Yes, I just wrapped up a class a few minutes ago and I have another one this afternoon. But I appreciate right. you inviting me on here to talk with you. I oh, agree with you. <laughs> good. <Thank> you. <laughs> 
Yes, I think you're scraping the bottom of the barrel for me now, but. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So how has this year been? 2020, pretty much busy. Well, I stay busy all the time. It's, you know, it's a little different working from home and uh, dealing with all this sort of stuff. I'm, I'm not as excited about teaching my classes online. Uh, I right. always like to deal with the students in person, but I end up having conversations like this with my students just about every day. And so that's kind of nice. Awesome. That's true, too. And look at this. Roxy's on here. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell we know. To tell tell everybody to turn their cameras. <laughs> we know. Don't worry. It's not my show. I can't do that. <laughs> I'll be getting the hook today. I think. Oh yes, <laughs> that would be one. That would be one of the things. <laughs> so let, let us let us begin from the beginning and. And I'm, I'm right away going to address photography. Uh, what got you into photography? Um, well, my grandfather and my father both were kind of amateur photographers. They enjoyed it a lot. And um, my father actually passed away a month before I was born. And so when I was growing up, the only connection really that I had to him were his photographs. And then my mother passed away when I was eight. And so I was still kind of, you know, growing up. And, and my only connection then to my parents and to a lot of my family was through those photographs. So I, I saw the importance of photography and just mm -hmm. the, that I, I liked that connection. And, uh, and it kind of drove me into it, I guess. Awesome. And then how did you turn towards concert photography in particular? Well, I think that, you know, everybody has their certain passion that, you know, they're, they're a writer or they're a musician or they're an artist. And then they have other things that they're very interested in. And so I, I've always enjoyed uh, music and, you know, Alice Cooper, especially I enjoy. And so I started taking photographs at concerts just as kind of a, a fun thing and mm -hmm. it sort of evolved from there, I guess. I still do awesome. a, lot of, a lot of photography with individuals doing, uh, I, I do some work with the Humane Society here in the area. Every summer I do photographs of, of people with their dogs so that um, uh, they put it into a book and they use that to raise money for the Humane Society here, and help out the animals. And then I also do a lot of a, a lot of model portfolios, and uh, I, I work film festivals and things like that to to do uh, photographs of different celebrities and things. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so which when was to, uh, okay? Good. Uh, when it comes to concerts, uh, out of all the gigs and concerts you've shot, uh, which was the most fun and your favorite? Um, well, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've been an Alice Cooper fan since I was really young. And so that's yeah. always something that that's exciting to me to be able to, um, to photograph or to be backstage photographing, um, to be kind of involved and treated like part of the team. I think that just, that, that's a thrill. And so I would say that, that some of those, uh, some of those shows, Actually, the last show that I shot with Alice, I, there's that was actually from uh, when I, I photographed the Hollywood Vampires, and so I was backstage with Tommy after that, uh, and that was a good show. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so any of these times that I that I get to either be the only photographer or that I get access to certain things that other people don't, I, I think that's that's exciting. That's true. Yeah, and you have you have been backstage with with a lot of these artists. So, what is what is your favorite backstage moment with anyone? Wow. Um, or how is it to hang out backstage with them? Well, it's a lot what, of fun. What <laughs> happens? 
Um, it's, I think it's probably different now than it used to be because it used to be, you know, lots of craziness going on and, uh, you know, being backstage at an Alice Cooper concert is, is very relaxed and calm and there's not any craziness going on. It's, it's more of, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just nice to hang out with friends and to talk with them. And, uh, I don't get to see them often enough. And so it, it's always nice to catch up. Mm -hmm. And, so, taking you a bit back, how did you become Alice Cooper's Thank concert you, photographer? Can you tell us the story behind it? Well, I'm not. I'm not really his official concert photographer. Um, I think okay. Kyler really is the one that that does most of that stuff. I just uh, I try to help out where I can, and mm -hmm. I, I, you know, like I said, it's a passion of mine. I like the music. I love the show, and I, I love photography, and so if I can help them with with taking these shots for them and and promoting them and that sort of thing, it promotes both of us at the same time, and it's right. I don't know, it's really great. When was the first Alice Cooper concert you attended? The first one I attended was uh, January of nineteen. 88, I think it was. Wow. Um, a long time. We weren't even born. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but it was, it was awesome. Um, one of my friends that I had grown up with ended up getting the tickets and he got front row opera pit. So we were just leaning on the stage like this. And, Whoa. Um, it was amazing. And Kane Roberts was playing guitar for Alice and um, Alice did the things where he, he cut off the heads of zombies and blood splattered all over <laughs> us. And, and he took a microphone stand and shoved it through one of the guys. It, it was really theatrical and awesome. And I had some blood splattered all over me and I was loving it. It was, it was just a, so much fun. <laughs> did, uh, did you ever get to throw the balloon into the audience? Not yet. Hopefully someday no, I'll be able to do that. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So I'm also going to uh, put in some questions that we received. And here's one from Robbie. Oh, so boy. how did you, did your pictures get chosen for the Imagine Your Reality album? You'll have to ask Ryan that. He's the one that chose it, I guess. <laughs> but that that was I was really excited about that. Um, Ryan and I had done a, a few shots together, and I'd taken some portraits and things of him, and sent that one to him. And I think Bianca may have had something to do with it. No, those those are not my it? photos. Mine those were in the, the photos. No, mine was on the inside sleeve. Uh, where the, ah. with the record, it was a black and white portrait of Ryan, and I think Bianca liked it, and so that probably twisted Ryan's arm a little bit toward putting that one on there. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. And recently, you have started sending out this. <laughs> this is something everyone is loving. Well, I'm glad. I, I just did that for fun. I, thought it, I just thought I would get some pics made. I wanted to see what it looked like to put my photo on a pic. And uh -huh. so I ordered a few. And I I only have a couple of them left. And uh, everybody just hit me up for them and said, oh, I want one, I want one. And so I just mailed them out to everybody for fun. Now I have uh, to order awesome. more. You should Honestly, be getting if I pictures. could do a good picture, I would take pictures of my dog and put it all over the place. So, yeah. Yeah, I like taking photos of my dog. He's, oh, he's good to hang out with. You can see him back here sleeping over here. Oh, which, okay. which brings me he's to. He's a standing. good model. <laughs> he's sleeping. Oh, he definitely <laughs> does. He's really chilling, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, how did your um, how did your story with Stanley start? Like, how long have you had him? Well, I got him when he was a puppy. Um, 
a former student of mine had uh, had a, a dog that had puppies and she needed to get rid of them. And she posted a picture and said, here are some different puppies. And, and I said, oh, I like those. I, I want it. Actually, she had a little black puppy. Let's just say. Sleeve shot. Oh, okay. Ah, there he is. Ryan's keeping tabs on us. Um, so, addition. so the uh, uh, she contacted or I contacted her and said I'd like one of the puppies and she actually had a little black one that I liked and I had another black lab at the time and so I thought oh yeah that the the black one on, on the on my my left there was my older dog and so I was going to get another little black one that's Weston and uh, yeah. and so um, she ended up bringing the dog to the park and she said oh we got rid of the black one already so we have this one left and it was stanley and he was sitting under a, a picnic table Aww. and he was cute as could be and we said all right we'll take him and so he Aww. came home and had lots of fleas and ticks that day and we had to give him a bath in the kitchen sink mm -hmm. um, he's been a member of the family ever since How oh yeah definitely What's that, Funky? How old is Stanley? He's six. Oh, cool. July the 4th. He's birthday. younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> so who are the photographers that inspire you? Well, uh, my dog Weston that you just showed is named after a very famous photographer named Edward Weston. Oh. And he is... He he's no longer living, but he was one of the great American photographers, and mm -hmm. uh, I really love his work. My dog before that was named Laszlo, after okay. Laszlo Holinage, who was the photography teacher at the Bauhaus in Germany, mm -hmm. and um, I, I really like both of their work. I, there are a lot of current photographers that I admire as well, but. Um, I don't know. There's really too many to mention, mm -hmm. and I don't know that anybody knows who who I'm talking about. Anyway, oh, and Mike <laughs> no, is, a... is Stanley named after Paul Stanley? Yes, actually, he is. My my wife, wow. when we were trying to come up with his name, the only time that he would come to her is if she would make little kiss noises, and she would... and so she goes, "We name we have to name him after something with kiss." And I said, "Well, then it's got to be Gene <laughs> Simmons or Paul Stanley." And she goes, no, I'm thinking like <laughs> Romeo. And I said, no, we're not naming him Romeo. Um, so we came up with Stanley because I thought, I, I usually name my dogs after artists or photographers. And I thought Stan Lee is a, a great artist and designed wow. Spider-Man and all that. So yeah. uh, we can kind of say it was half and half, half Stan Lee and half Paul Stanley. <laughs> Ryan always puts dog hashtag dog porn on my photos of Stanley, and I, I'm afraid <laughs> when people are going to be searching for that, they're going to run across my stuff. I had to do it. So, um, and, okay, go ahead, Becca. <laughs> so, um, how how it was for you um, the first time that you took a camera on your hands? And you know, you went out to take pictures. How you felt? What is, what is it for you? Um, taking pictures, um, doing this this wonderful work you do. Um, one of the, one of the very first cameras that I got, uh, I got when I was about five or six years old, and it was just a little point and shoot camera, and it, I I was really excited about it, and I took a lot of shots, and actually. One of the shots that I took um, in one of the very first roles was a photograph of my mother. And she was going through a lot of cancer treatments and things at the time. And she'd come home and she'd had an operation and she was really, you know, not, not doing well. But she was dressed up and she, she I, I thought she looked very pretty. And so I asked her if I could take a, a photograph of her. And um, she later, later, my grandmother told me that that had meant a lot to her because I had told my mom that I thought she looked pretty and, and it made her feel a lot better. And so it, it kind of, it made me feel like the, the photographs that I take maybe could make people feel good. 
and make people feel good about themselves. Yes. Um, but that that camera, I really didn't know how to control it. I mean, there was no control other than you push a button and it takes the photo. Um, and so when I was trying to take shots, I couldn't get what I had in my mind uh, because the camera wasn't capable of doing that. And I, I didn't understand that at the time. But years mm -hmm. later, when I ended up getting a 35 millimeter camera where you had control over the shutter speed and the aperture and those kinds of things, then I, I learned how to actually control it so that you could get the look of the photo that you wanted. And that, right. that made a big difference to me. And it, it, it was exciting. And, and I like doing that now with my students. I like to see when, when they're working with their cameras and they start to figure out how they can change the way it looks. It's, it's always exciting to see that, that moment of realization in their, in their eyes that, oh, I know what I'm doing now. Because awesome. I remember it myself. That's yeah. so cool. And I'm sure she was yeah. really beautiful. Well, thank you. So when you're when you're teaching students and like and I, I don't mean online when but when you're on campus or something. So I don't know if it's true, but when when a student takes admission to photography college or course, they also give cameras to them and they're given some assignments to take pictures or something. Well, it varies. It varies from school to school. Um, the school where I teach, we we don't give out cameras. The students actually buy their own cameras. Okay. And so they're they're getting the equipment that they plan to use. And so I have to learn how to use all these different cameras because they bring in lots of different things. And oh. um, so it, sometimes it's a little bit difficult because every camera is a little bit different. You don't know where certain buttons or knobs or whatever are located. All right. All right. And what is the gear that are you currently using or your favorite? I'm not using any gear right now. I haven't used any gear in the last six months, but I'm actually, I'm doing a photo shoot, I think on Friday, oh. uh, which I, I'm photographing some dogs for uh, that Humane Society book. So that'll be the first shooting that I do for a while. But right now I'm using a Sony camera and I wow. just bought the Sony camera a couple of years ago and I like it quite a bit, but I used Canon cameras for right. probably 25 years or something before that. No, probably longer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I read somewhere you also had your ad agency. I, I used to have, sure. I had a, an ad agency that when I first graduated from, from the university, and um, I got out and I wanted to be a graphic designer. And I hate to keep bringing up deaths, but when I, right before I graduated from college, um, I'd been adopted by an uncle and aunt and my aunt passed away right before I graduated from college. And so my uncle was kind of distraught. And so I wanted to stay with him for a little while because my plans were actually to um, go backpack through Europe for a while and then uh, go off to graduate school and mm -hmm. that kind of put the kibosh on all of those things. And I decided to stay there with my uncle and help take care of him. And I was looking around for a job and fresh out of college, nobody wanted to hire me. They, um, there just wasn't any, any jobs for what I wanted to do. So I decided to make my own job. And so I started an advertising agency and um, I, Actually, the, the Humane Society was the first company that I went to work for because I couldn't get anybody to hire me for anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to them and they, they were doing a, a fundraiser to try to get some money for a new building for the Humane Society. And their ads looked awful. And so I, I said to them, why don't you let me do your ad? And I'll do it for free as long as you let me put my name on it. So it, you know, ad sponsored by me. And so they let me do that and they got more response from the ad that I created than anything that they had done in the past. So all the people that were on the board of directors for the Humane Society contacted me and said, hey, we'd like you to do our advertising. And so that kind of got me started and got me some clients to kind of get my business going. And uh, I did that for about, about 10 years, I guess, something like that. 
and uh, was able to work with a, lot, a wide variety of clients and get a lot of work done. And then uh, after that, I went on to work for the University of Arkansas doing some of their advertising. And uh, right. that, helped, that helped to pay for my graduate school. Awesome. And that journey is so inspiring. And not only that, like, you made you made so much out of it and 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 that's re that's really great and that's what inspires us and everyone right now watching so uh, secondly uh what i'd really like to ask is so, uh, since we're on the uh on this topic and i want to ask you about the students and uh, so and uh, your art sorry your photographic art was chosen uh, for the uh, Arkansas historic something prominent uh, well Arkansas I, Art Council the Art Council has has purchased a, a few of my pieces and those are um, on display I guess in some of the some of the government buildings around the state. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly where they are. Okay. But your, and your work was also published in many magazines. You saw. Yeah, I've, I've, had, I've had quite a few pieces published and that's always exciting. Lately, the things that have been published are mostly pictures of Ryan and Tommy and those guys. And, and that's great. I love, I love getting into music magazines and things. I used to be more in uh, photography magazines and, and books. Right. That was a good day. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a fun time. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And you really love these guys. Oh yeah, those guys are great. <laughs> cool. So I want to ask you, you know, you as a professor, is there something that uh, you you know you come across commonly within your students like they lack something and uh, or need to work on something that happens very commonly and you need to tell the same thing repeatedly to them. Well, I think I think one of the things that a lot of students um, do is that, is they give up too easily, mm -hmm. and I think that. They, they run into a problem and rather than trying to solve it, they just give up. And so I think that if they'll, right. if they'll try, you know, that, that means a lot, just giving that effort, even if they screw up. I think that, that making those mistakes is actually a great way to learn to be better at what you're doing. I've made lots of mistakes. I still make mistakes all the time. Uh, you were saying mm -hmm. before that, that uh, that Funky and Becca are both still students, but I think we all have to keep being students for the rest of our lives, especially oh, if, you're, yes. if you're working in, in any sort of field that deals with technology, that technology changes all the time. And so like working with Ryan on his stuff, I've been having to learn all kinds of new little animation things and video things that I've never really had to deal with too much. Mm. But I, right. I love doing that. I like learning new things. But it's a that fact. takes me. Um, yeah. We will always be learning something new in our lives. Right. So, That's true. Yeah. That takes me to the hearts in trouble. The three rocks is that took you. I remember. I guess we had a conversation about it. It took you three days. It took me a while. That that was a hassle. And I, I, wanted, I wanted him so badly to just go out outside of the room, in, you know, in a, in a park or something to, to shoot that video because I thought, oh, it could have been so much more. Uh, and, you know, for the effort of, of having to rotoscope and cut out, because Ryan would right. do this kind of thing and just reach out. And when he covered his other self up, I had to go in and, and cut out around his hand as it moved through every frame and he was shooting that at 60 frames per second mm -hmm. and so wow. it's essentially you're cutting out that same thing 60 times 
for each second that that was done. And uh, it, it was a lot of work to do. And, and I'm not sure that it was, I, I don't know. I, it's a great song. I love the song. And I, I, I love that, that, that I got to be involved like that. I'd like to have a chance to redo it once we're able to get out. And maybe, maybe we can shoot Ryan in a different location. And maybe I can right. actually camera work and get the shots and then make it a, a new, better video or better version of it. <laughs> the video was really brilliant though. Oh, thank you. And and the three rocks is was it your idea or Ryan's idea? It was my idea. Um, yeah. I I saw and I can't remember who it was. There were some some artist did that same sort of thing on a on another show and I, I can't remember right now who that was, a, a country artist, so I don't know their name. Um, but they were in their studio and recorded themselves at three different mics. And I thought it was just really a, a great idea. Um, thank you, Kat. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought it was really cool. And so I mentioned it to him and he said, awesome, let's do it. And so I kind of explained wow. to him what I'd like him to do and how he should kind of set that up. And he had a very limited space, so it was very tight. And, uh, You're right. But it was fun. Keith oh, Urban. Yeah, yeah. That's who it is. So the other day, I was going through some student reviews about you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got something. Funky, would you like to read? Okay, so. These are the uh, good ones, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's a really great professor to have. The environment in his class is very relaxed. He gives non-biased feedback on your photos and tells you ways you can improve on them instead of just telling you what is wrong. He makes photography fun and lets you really be creative in your own way. Out of class time is expected for assignments. Uh huh. And this is interesting. Uh, before I took Victor's class, I was intimidated by him. He has a reputation of being stern. I was really surprised to find out that he's actually very personable. He's a really nice guy. He seems passionate about teaching. He has a good sense of humor and tries to make class fun. That's cool. Wow. Those are good ones. So Those you're a good. tough grader then? Well, I, I, try, <laughs> I try to be... Uh, you know, I want the students to learn something out of it. I always like at the end of the semester when the students come to me and they say, wow, I never thought that I would be able to do these things. <laughs> Can I recap everything? Great. Okay, Robbie, thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we have a question from Kathy. So let's hear. Is it a video question? Yes, yes, we got a video right. question. Let's hear what she has to say. Hi, Vic. Good to see you on Voice It Show. Um, I have a question for you. If you could choose any subject matter in person and any location in the world, who would you choose to photograph and where would it be? Ah, and uh, this is Alice. And Alice says that pets should have their own as food. She particularly likes smoked salmon. What does Stanley steal off plates? Take care. That's awesome. Stanley doesn't <laughs> steal off plates. He is very good about that. But he and I usually do share some popcorn when we're watching a movie. Um, and he also likes watermelon when I'm eating watermelon. But he, he, knows, he knows the things that I'll share with him and the things that I won't share with him. And... That's Actually, just, just before my class this morning, he and I went out to McDonald's for breakfast. Most of the restaurants in town know him. And when we go through the drive through they give him a slice of bacon in the morning. And he's very happy about that. And he's also very spoiled and climbs over the top of me. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Yeah. But who, who I would photograph and where I would photograph them, I, oh, I don't know. Yeah. That's a tough one. I, I really something that I've always wanted to do to do is to do a one-on-one -on -one photo session with Alice Cooper. That's something I've not really had the opportunity to do. I've photographed him a lot on stage, and I love that. He's somebody that I really I, I've just admired him for so long, and I, I 
I don't know. That would that would be a, a real thrill for me to be able to just sit down and do a one on one with him. That's awesome. Wow. We really hope that happens too. Uh, yeah. Ryan, this is something. What's that, Funky? I said, Ryan, you heard him. Make it happen. Oh. Well, maybe I'll get a reference yeah. from him, hopefully. He said he's going to write a review <laughs> send, somewhere. Send him this live. Maybe, maybe he'll see it and think, mm, that's a good idea. Why not? Maybe. <laughs> Thinking about Robin. I asked Ryan to write a review. I was going to put it on my website. And right. Two years ago, I think. I'm still waiting for mm -hmm. that review. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and this is top of my mind right now. So, when Ryan is on screen, and we, when he asks you to put up a random picture. <laughs> I usually throw my hands up and go, what are you doing? One of those kinds of things. But he can see me down in the corner of the screen yeah. making faces and raising fingers. Again. So since he is in the comments right now, do you want to say something to him? Lash oh, no, out I, no, Lash I say out. things to him. I, <laughs> I tell him what I think. And I, and I think it's it's all in fun. And so I, oh, I yeah. like I Definitely. like. Uh, trying to keep up with what the conversation is and trying to bring things up. And I always like, if I can do that and and surprise him and surprise the guest with something that was unexpected. But it helps right. if, I've, if I have a little bit of, of a reference so that I can pull images that I think will come up. Yes. You said this one. This, this one was, this one goes back. And this was a pretty much, I guess you're you're very you're feeling very special that Ryan is your friend. Yeah, I I am I'm very lucky to to have him as a friend. Definitely. And somehow I don't know, you are also a great fan of DC and Marvel. Sure. Yeah. I love love comic books. I grew up on them so much so that you became Superman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was um, I was that's Aisha Tyler that uh, she and I were yeah. hanging out, and um, uh, another actor that was in a, a, a film that, that she was in, or that she directed the film, and so we uh, we were at a kind of a charity event type thing and i i convinced them to put on these costumes and we ended up running around dressed up as superheroes all day and wow uh, it was just it was a lot of fun they they had a blast and uh, i've hung out with them a few times after that and they always talk about that day that that it was fun and they were glad that i convinced them to put on the costumes <laughs> that is really fun I thought and they would convince you to put the custom, but it was you convincing <laughs> them. Wow. <laughs> and how's your son doing these days? What's that? That was my how son. How's your son? Well, he's on the couch. That's the only. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me as This a baby. was fun. Face filters are always fun. Yeah. Okay. Vic, there is there is any place in the world that you know it's it's a place that you you know would enjoy a lot and and love to take pictures of. I don't know, um, like a like a place you know um, you would like to take some good pictures of it. There's a, there's any place that you you would like to travel and do it. Well, I, I like traveling a lot, and uh, I've been lucky enough to travel quite a bit. Greece is a place I'd really like to go back to. I've, I've been to a, a few of the Greek islands and, and really loved that. I've never been to Asia, and so I, I would like to go to, to see the Great Wall of China and uh, a few things like that. I've never been to Australia. That's another place that, that I'd like to visit. 
Wow, but that's, that's I, I don't cool. do a lot of landscape photography. I saw somebody earlier was asking about landscape photography. I, I do it, but it's not something that really interests me a lot unless I can do something a little bit different with it. Mm -hmm. I like it when I can have a, a model or something in, in the environment. I think that's a lot of fun. But yeah. just, wow. uh, you know, making postcards and things, I'm not all that excited about doing that. Yeah, yeah, of course. And you visited Italy with your students? Yeah, I've been lucky enough to uh, teach photography in Italy for several different summers. And so I bring a group from the United States and take them to Italy with me. And we stay in the city of Siena for uh -huh. about a month. And those students get to learn Italian language courses, uh, and they also get to take my photography class or another class that's offered. Uh, that summer, um, those students were taking either, oh, no, actually, there, were, there was going to be a journalism class that was taught, but it, it didn't end up happening. So all those students took my photography. Some of them were also studying some cooking classes, and uh, mm -hmm. one of the girls there was actually really excited to to be able to work in some of the local restaurants. The people in Siena are so nice. And uh, they they just welcome the students. We stay in a hotel there and uh, they just treat us like family. Uh, this that's that's from one of the one of the day yeah. trips that we took. It's one of uh, the big clicks. Wow. Yeah, that's that's from um, up in the area of Cinque Terre. So I try to take the students to see some interesting sites. We go to Florence and uh, Rome, yes. and uh, some of them have gone to Venice. Right. Uh, we, it's a lot of fun. Oh, there's Montepulciano. <laughs> I'm just looking at the comments over on the side. Yeah. So wow. how does one, one start on the path toward photography? if one has to pursue a career? Well, I think it's a, it's a difficult thing to, to choose as a career because everybody has a camera now. Everybody has a cell phone and everyone thinks they're a photographer. And everyone has these little apps that will do all kinds of fancy things to them that, that used to take hours and hours to build that stuff up. And uh, so it, I think it's a it's a pretty difficult thing to get into because so many people are doing it, and you have to find something that helps you to stand out among the, the crowd. Uh, but I think yeah. really anything that you're passionate about, if you if you're willing to put in the time and the effort, and uh, you learn from your mistakes and you take criticism on it and all that kind of stuff, you can keep working to improve. Uh, but with, with photography, it's pick up something that will record an image and start making images. I mean, you don't have to have a fancy camera. You can do it with your phone. There, there are a lot of photographers actually that, that just use a phone. Uh, sure. one, of my, one of my favorite photographers is a guy named Dan Burkholder. He is, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's amazing. And he does, he's actually written a couple of books on iPhoneography. It's all about wow. using your iPhone to take photographs. He does a, a thing where he'll take a series of photographs uh, across and, and down like this kind of puzzle piece, those things together and merge them using a program like Photoshop. And so he can, he can use a, a camera that only takes a, you know, a 10 megapixel shot and he can combine all these together to get one that's 500 megapixels. Wow. And uh, you can print it as a as a wall, you know. Mm -hmm. it's really yes. Amazing. yes. Right. So it, it do really doesn't matter the equipment that you have. It's that True. you have you have the passion and you have the eye for it. I guess. All right. That's awesome. Oh, that's and what is it? What is it that you have learned over the years through your art? or through art, basically, and photography. What have I learned? Yeah, as in life lessons. Um, well, I think one thing is not everyone's going to get it. 
So when you when you make something that's artistic, there's always going to be a critic, and there's always going to be someone who loves it and someone who hates it. And um, you just have to kind of have the the drive to keep going and doing what you want to do. It's not always about like finding a style and copying it. I think that's a good way to start because you can find something that you're interested in and mimic that. I always tell my students, it's kind of like when you're learning a language that, you know, when you're, you're first learning to speak, you mimic what your parents say. And then eventually you learn enough words that you can say your own things. And so if, if you do the same thing with art, you mimic what someone else is doing, eventually you'll figure out what you want to say with your art. But not everyone's going to understand it or get it. And not every work of art is for every person. And so you just have to kind of realize that, that, that uh, you can't get depressed by the fact that not everyone says they love it and that somebody's out there saying, oh, this sucks, it's horrible. Um, sure. Because not for them. Because art is also a field, it's, it doesn't have predefined formulae that you can follow and you get the desired reason. It's, right. it's pretty much uh, your, your inside your intuition and what you see, so. Yeah, art is, is subjective. And so right. there's not a, a right way to do it or a wrong way to do it. There's just different ways. Yes. And I think as long as it's communicating something to someone, uh, that that's the important thing. I see Robbie Miller's asking about uh, using film. And yeah. uh, I, I still use film from time to time because it does have a, a little bit of a different feeling to it. And I think that that can be kind of a nice, a nice thing to add in once in a while. I have a few different cameras. I actually did a, a thing a few years ago. There was a local photographer that would build, he, he built his own cameras and they were pinhole cameras. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially just a box with a little hole in the front with a lens and you'd put large format film in that and, and you could take photographs. And so he built, some really beautiful wooden cameras. And when he passed away, his wife contacted a lot of local photographers and said, I want, to, I want you to take this camera and um, we pass the camera around and each of the photographers took a shot in their style using that same camera. And then we had an exhibition of the work. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it was really interesting to see all the different types of photographs that, that people took with the same camera. And uh, I, I just, I, it was a lot of fun. And so that, that was a, a film camera that I used. Uh, missed not using Photoshop. <laughs> I've never used any Photoshop. I've never touched up Ryan at all. He doesn't need it. He's perfect. His skin is flawless. His, he has no wrinkles at all. And um, True. the COVID has done nothing to diminish his physique. He is in such great shape. Those yes. early, early workout videos for, sure. are for him. Tried to do a drawing of him, but it's impossible to copy him. It's it's just impossible. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I. I was trying to asking to, uh, I was trying to keep from asking, but I really want to uh, bring this because it's inspiring. It's motivating to anyone and every listener or every viewer should know. Uh, I think it, it will strengthen them uh, from within and uh, your personal story uh, of beating the seabird. Oh. And, and we really think you, you are a superhero mm -hmm. in the real life. So, oh, yeah. and you have, you have never spoken because when we saw that Facebook post for the first time and everybody was that you're going in for the surgery, Everybody was totally shocked, taken aback by shock. And 
are really worried. But uh, when I texted you and you said, you know, I try to keep all the negatives out and I try to focus on the positives. So I'm not going to ask you how was the experience. That's I'm going to ask... <laughs> I'm going to ask you what did you learn from it that you want to pass on to everyone okay um well it, it was one of those things that i had kind of suspected that at some point i would end up getting cancer uh because both of my parents died of cancer and uh i thought that it, you know i had a pretty good chance of it so i I've, i've always been good about getting checked and uh you know i i get skin checks and things like that for moles that look funny um and uh about 2 years ago i i'd gone in for a, a skin check and they found that i had melanoma and mm-hmm. so i i had a, a couple of pieces cut out on me and um they took those in and found that the cancer actually went to the edge of the pieces that they cut out so i had to go back in and they cut out a bigger chunk and uh and they think that i caught it early enough that that it wasn't a problem but then um i went in i was actually looking to um to get some uh um, let me think how to say it but well i i was i was going into a doctor i got the blood work done and they found that my psa numbers were very high and said well this seems a little weird and so i um i went and got more blood work done and they found out that it was still very high and so it turned out that i had prostate cancer and oh. so i got a lot of uh i had to get biopsies done and things like that which is horrible and they uh they said well um it looks like the best option is to remove your prostate just cut it out and that way the cancer doesn't spread at all if i instead if i left it that probably within the next 5 years it would spread to something else and if i didn't or if i did take it out there was only like a 1% chance that it would that it would spread at all so um i went in and and i you know it actually kind of came on quickly i i found out about this stuff like in january and then by may i was having surgery on it mm-hmm. and uh, i think everything went well and i just went and saw my doctor again on monday i had some more blood work they wanted to give it a few months after the surgery to let things kind of heal and settle down and and he said that uh all my numbers are back where they're supposed to be and so he thinks that i'm doing really well i'm glad about yeah, that but i i think that's really good the, the the thing to learn is really that you know every day is is precious you know you got to you got to think about the fact that you never know when something like that is going to show up and uh, a lot of a lot of people um you know have that happen and they haven't been able to to do the thing they want in life and so i i like to get out and do the things that i want to do and experience the things that i want to experience while i can because you never know when it's going to end but also right. go get go get checked check get your skin checked get your prostate checked even though that's that's not a a fun thing to do um get your things checked out i actually i was giving roxy a hard time about it because i wanted him to go he he said he had a couple of spots on his skin that he wanted to get checked out and i think he finally Good. went and so um you know hopefully it'll it'll save some people yeah i true. totally agree mike true true and when you have your family beside you yeah that love you're surrounded with you can defeat anything look at the big smile of stanley uh <laughs> yes <laughs> that's well, such a lovely thing to turn this around and make it about him you can always guarantee <laughs> that he will make the story about him cool <laughs> So we have a couple of questions and then if someone wants to join us to say hi to you and then oh, we'll wrap up. Some, let me see where there was some questions that were further back I don't know if there was some oh Amy was asking if I'd ever 
shot Razorback football. And yes, I, I have. I've, I've photographed some of the some of the Razorback games, and uh, that that's a lot of fun to do too. I, I like. I'm not as big into NFL as Ryan is, but I do like college sports a lot. I I get into that a little bit more. All right. Here's a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a couple of the videos that Mike has recently posted, I, I'm thinking that he is really pushing the the limits of hair. hair on girl. Yeah, he's a very hairy guy. He is beyond COVID hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kina had a question. Was there any photo session with Alice, Ryan, Tommy, Chuck, Nita, or Glenn that you remember the most? Um, well, actually, there was. Well, I think the, probably the first time that I photographed each of them, that's that's one that I always remember a lot because it was such a fun sort of thing. And the first time that I photographed Ryan. Uh, I actually photographed him and Tommy together, and we had a, a really great day. I remember that Ryan, as soon as I got there, he was he you know, was very friendly and treated me great, and took me on the tour bus and everything. And that was always that was pretty exciting. Uh, I have to thank Nita though; because she was actually the first person that contacted me and said, uh, "I would like you to do some portraits with me." And so I was I was really excited about that. And I think after Ryan saw those or after he knew that I'd worked with her, that's when um, I told him, I said, I'd love to do shots of you. And so I did that and met Tommy then. And and then I um, I met Chuck and uh, all the Bisto Blanco crew over in uh, a city nearby in Tulsa. And I did a photo shoot with them and got to hang out with them for most of the day. And that was also a, a really great time. I don't know. They're, they're always fun. I, I love taking photographs. And so even if I'm sitting backstage uh, or, you know, wherever, sitting in a, the corner of a bar, waiting for hours and hours, if, if I get to take photos, I'm happy. True. A fab. And we have one more question which pretty much yes mike is big for oh, well, that i kind of i guess i kind of answered that i with with taking photographs of, of the band i think that they just saw some of the stuff that i shot and i tagged them in the photos and things like that and and then eventually we kind of got in touch and and worked out so that i could shoot them or, or you know, meet Ryan and, and take shots of him. That was that was a lot of fun. And I always encourage my students to do that too because um, I'll have them do work of, like in one of my design classes where we're working with some of the Illustrator software for Adobe. I have the students do a portrait of their favorite musician. And wow. when they finish it, they're, they're always excited about how it looks. And I encourage them to post it online and to tag the person because frequently they'll get a note from them that says, hey, thanks for making that portrait of me. And uh, yeah. you know, that, that makes it all worth it. When, when you spend the time to make these pieces, and I see a lot, of, a lot of people making art on Instagram, and sometimes they'll use my photos as reference, which is always kind of a, an exciting thing for me to see when, when I've inspired somebody to make some some more art but when they tag those musicians or movie stars or whatever and then that person comments on it and says hey i like what you've drawn or what you painted it you know that's, that's a thrill and it it's that incentive that will keep you doing it again and again beautiful and one important question from dave <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to talk to Ryan about that. We're we're in negotiations right now, and Stanley drives a hard bargain. He expects a lot. He needs popcorn and bacon and watermelon. 
uh, as well as bones. Bones, yeah. Wow. And and a soft pillow. No. It's, it's hard to have a star in your house, right? Oh, he's you know, <laughs> it's tough to deal with. Cool. I don't know so, if you remember, but I did a drawing of you and Stanley. I do remember that. But I that, guess and it I was it like in 2018. It's been a few years, but it was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it was really fun because I was like, I'm going to try to do a drawing of them, but we, I just have a pen. Well, uh. that, it's always, you know, I, I understand people doing drawings of, of Ryan or Tommy or Alice or something like that, but doing a drawing of me, I just always kind of like, why would you do a drawing of me? But I, I was honored and, and it was exciting. Because you're cool. You're <laughs> really cool. Seriously. Well, and you. it was amazing to draw you. It was really cool. I need to do it again cool. and, you know, compare. You should. You always, every couple of years, do, do some, go back to the same subject and try yeah. it again and see how you change. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do a, a, a highlight on Instagram, big strands. Never a year cool. I do one. You know? Do it. Funky, do you do any artwork? Hmm? What? So do you do art for Funky? Yeah. Funky. I, um, I, yeah, I do actually, but in the past time, recently, I don't really draw. I sing more, I post covers. Uh, I'm actually working on a portrait of Giant Up, like a huge portrait, and it takes months to do that. I mean, yeah. months to finish everything, to, you know, get motivated, inspired, and yeah. <laughs> I was looking at Stanley. You're really distracting. <laughs> Sorry. I actually had thought about um, while I was stuck at home with. Uh, during this pandemic and stuff, doing some paintings, some large scale paintings, and uh, somebody kept me tied up doing animations and video editing and things that I never True. got around to doing. It. I'll, I'll have it's to. It's really do it relaxing to do it. Painting, I love it. like like yesterday, I just did a paint on my pens, and I took like five hours to do it straight. And I was sitting down on my floor, so. <laughs> Now my back hurts, but it was worth it. <laughs> it was really worth it to do a Michael Jackson on my pants, but yeah. Oh, uh, look at that. <laughs> awesome. So just to give it a closure. Uh, last question is that Oh, uh, <laughs> I thought he was thinking or freezing. Sorry. I, <laughs> I came back. I'm a Yeah, he is lying. So, uh, question is yeah. what, what, even though it's been so inspiring your talk, but one, one thing that you'd like people to remember a message that you want to, that you want to give to our viewers. Oh gosh! Spay and neuter your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's great. You know, I don't. I don't have. I don't have any <laughs> advice or anything like that. I, I think that. Well, I guess. MDB. Whatever it is that, that you um, that you're into, just really be into it. You know, I, I think that if, if you if you put your heart and soul into it, and you put the time into it, uh, also. Keep in mind that you know they say that it takes ten thousand hours to master something, and so right. you you can't expect to get it immediately. I've been dealing with this guitar thing, and I definitely see I can access. Oh, I don't know how to play guitar, and then I see these videos of him just jamming out, and then I pick up my guitar and I go clunk 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 clunk. Uh, <laughs> but I know it's going to take ten thousand hours to get there, and I'm maybe maybe fifty hours in. I don't know. I'm not not very far into it. Uh, but I, I think whatever it is that you're that you want to do, you can do it. I, I mentioned before that I, um, I when I was adopted when I was young, and uh, my parents were both kind of artistic, and they were into that 
type of thing. Uh, my father designed airplanes and my mother was a, wow. an interior decorator and, and she also was a teacher. And so I kind of, I guess, combined a little bit of all of that stuff to become who I am. But when I was adopted, I, I was taken in by my uncle who was uh, a career military man. And he would always tell me, art is a hobby, it's not a job. And if you pursue a career in art, you are going to be living in a ditch in a cardboard box and you won't be able to afford anything. And that's a horrible idea. And I just said, that's what I want to do. You know, he said, you're not supposed to enjoy your work. You're supposed to work and then you can come home and enjoy that. But I, I thought I, I want to enjoy what I'm doing all the time. And so I, I chose to study art despite him not wanting me to. And um, I've been happy with, with how things have gone so far. Yeah. So, There's do what you want to do. There's that tells you that art is not worth it, That's right? <laughs> Gosh, Ryan. That's, that's good advice right there. Don't Google pink socks. Oh, or do don't do it. No. Never do it. Or dog porn. Don't Google that either. Really? Yeah. Awesome. So um, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Vic, for joining us today and giving us your valuable time. Well, thanks for having this me. This was really, it. really fun. Thank you. I appreciate it. And Professor Vic has a class to teach you right after this interview. I do. I always have to rush busy, off. Busy man. <laughs> well, thanks. I've been good talking with you. It's, it's, I, you know, I feel like I know you guys just from all the posts that you put up, and and that you're always in the chats and the show and that kind of thing. And uh, Ken and I talk once in a while, just chatting back and forth. But it's it's great to have a an opportunity to talk to you guys. Aww. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah, that was really really cool. So I thank guess you. now thank you're going to get. Ryan. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, in the comment. And uh, before we give Vic the hook, <laughs> just so you know, uh, on Monday, that is 21st, we have our next guest coming. That is episode 16. And on the Voice It show. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I know about this one. Scotty Hagen. Scotty Hagen. Is gonna is gonna join us, join us on twenty first September. That is Monday, so be there on Monday as well as we interview Scotty. And uh, this, hey, look at connect that. with Vic. Follow him on Instagram. These are his socials, and uh, obviously you can look up at www.victorshelfon.com. Not you can, you have com. to. Yeah. <laughs> there are some <laughs> great photos and a lot of stuff. So this has been really inspiring. And uh, we are a bit disorganized, but that's what makes it funky. So <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you for everybody joining us in the comments and thank you ryan for being with us and everybody in the uh, team roxy robbie dave scotty and federal thank you you guys are awesome and take care until the next time see you on monday ciao for now uh, get the hook. No before hook. that <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you won it. Oh, <laughs> you're supposed to leave me gone. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you, everybody. Take care.